One of the most useful tools in my shop is the bandsaw. In fact, I have five bandsaws, though I'm trying to cut back. I love my saws because they're extremely versatile tools. But a lot of new woodworkers, and even some seasoned ones, fail to understand all that a bandsaw can do. I knew a skilled furniture maker that for years thought a bandsaw was a waste of money. He could cut his curves with his handheld jigsaw. So I brought him into my shop and I let him use these two Harvey bandsaws that I have here. Totally changed his viewpoint. Now he wouldn't be without a bandsaw. What convinced him? Well, he began to see how a quality bandsaw can perform many tasks just better than other tools. And that's what this video is about. We'll discuss some of the things that you may not have considered using a bandsaw for. Then we'll talk about what to look for in a good saw, so you don't waste your money on junk, or so you don't spend more than you have to on something you don't need. Now let's begin with curve cutting. With the right blade, a bandsaw can cut a tighter curve than you can with a handheld jigsaw. And while the blade of a handheld jigsaw can easily flex and produce an edge that's not square, a properly set up bandsaw can cut a square edge in very thick material. If you want to know more about choosing the right blade for cutting curves of different radiuses, I'll put a link below this video to a comprehensive tutorial we made about blade types and blade sizes. You'll want to check that out. Once you have a tool that can cut clean, accurate curves and thick materials, you open up a whole new world of woodworking. You can make bandsaw boxes of all types. You can make compound cuts on period furniture parts. Those fancy sculpted rockers that have become so popular, Sam Maloof sculpted those with a bandsaw. But curve cutting is only one of the many tasks a bandsaw is capable of. You can also make some straight cuts much more safely than you can with a table saw. For example, Cutting a small piece of wood at the table saw can easily cause a kickback because of the circular motion of the saw blade that moves downward at the front but upward at the back. There are ways to cut small pieces of wood at the table saw safely with jigs and clamps, but a bandsaw often is just safer and faster because it features a narrow blade with teeth that move in only one direction, straight downward. A bandsaw blade cannot kick a workpiece back at you. And while there is a limit to how close you would want to get your fingers to a bandsaw blade, you can do things with a bandsaw that you would never attempt with a table saw. Another important safety feature of a bandsaw is the ability to cut rough warped boards. For example, let's say you have an 8 inch wide rough sawn board and you want to rip it down to 6 inches so you can flatten it on your jointer. There's a cup or a twist in it. That could lead to a dangerous kickback if you try to rip that on the table saw. But a bandsaw can rip that workpiece no problem no danger of kickback. So I use my bandsaw quite a lot when I'm processing rough lumber. It's safer than a table saw for many of those cuts, and it's easier and more efficient than a handheld circular saw. Now let's talk about resawing. The time comes in every woodworker's life when he wants to cut a board that is really thick and make it into a bunch of thinner boards. If the board is narrow, you can do it with the table saw, but you're gonna waste more wood in the table saw's wider curve and table saw resawing always feels sketchy to me. A bandsaw, on the other hand, features a much thinner blade that wastes less wood. It's a little slower than a table saw, but much less pucker inducing, if you know what I mean. And many bandsaws will resaw much wider boards than a table saw will. I'm telling you, the ability to resaw will change the way you work. You'll make better use of your materials, and you can create stunning projects by book matching homemade veneers. We're just scratching the surface. There are all sorts of cool things you can do with a bandsaw, from milling logs to cutting circles to preparing turning blanks. But not every bandsaw can do all of the things I just mentioned. There are certain things you need to look for in a good saw, and it pays to know what you want to do with it before you buy one. For example, throat depth can be a very limiting factor. Manufacturers label their saws according to the distance between the blade and the column. A 10 inch saw, for example, may sound plenty large, but when you're trying to swing a large workpiece to cut a curve, or you want to cross cut a board, the larger the capacity, the better. 14 inches is the standard for small woodworking shops. And don't confuse throat depth with resaw capacity. Most 14 inch band saws will only cut about six inches of material. If you want to resaw lumber, you have to look for a saw with about 12 inches of capacity in the vertical direction. Many cast iron frame bandsaws have a split frame and you can purchase a riser block so you can raise the top half of the saw upward and increase your resaw capacity. If that's your only option, fine. 
but understand that there are limitations if you do modify your saw. For one thing, a wide blade, such as you need for good resawing, requires a tremendous amount of tension. That can flex a cast iron frame, let alone one with two seams in it now because you added a riser block. Because of this, you're likely to have to limit yourself to narrower blades for resawing, perhaps as narrow as 3 eighths of an inch. Narrow blades make it more difficult to cut a straight kerf, which will lead to more planing to smooth your surfaces and more wood waste. That can make the difference between getting two slices out of your expensive board or three. Saws that are not meant for resawing typically have smaller motors as well. Just because you increase your saw's cutting capacity doesn't mean you increased its cutting power. It's unlikely to have the oomph to cut through 10 or 12 inches of hardwood. So what about the differences between steel frames and cast iron frames? Well, steel frames are more rigid. They can be made in a single piece, eliminating the seam in the column. And they're often designed specifically for resawing with greater capacity. I'm not saying you can't resaw with a cast iron framed saw, but if I was buying a new saw and I plan to resaw with it, I would go with steel. What about a motor? If you plan to cut boards from small logs or resaw wide boards, or if you're a wood turner who works with big bowl blanks, then one and a half horsepower is kind of the minimum of what you want to look for. But if you only work with smaller materials in a little garage shop, you just do some curve cutting in three quarter inch thick stock, you make a few small bandsaw boxes, and you don't resaw anything more than three to six inches, you can get by just fine with three quarters or one horsepower. Finally, the blade guides. We made a whole tutorial about the differences between bearings and blocks and all the different types. I'll link to that below. But I can tell you, the quality of the blade guides are as important as any feature on the saw, especially how easy they are to adjust. If blade changes are frustrating, you're not going to do it. And your work is going to suffer because you are going to try to get by with the wrong blade just so you don't have to fight the guides and put the right blade on. A bandsaw is a big investment. You really should take your time and choose the right machine. Don't settle. It's better to save up for a good one than to waste your money on something you'll regret down the road. I hope this video helps you know what to look for. And don't forget to check out the other videos about blades and blade guides linked below. See you next time. As the builders behind some of the top brands in the industry, Harvey Machinery has for decades been letting others take credit for their innovation. Now they've developed their own line of saws with the quality and features once reserved only for professional shops. The woodworking world is officially on notice. Harvey Machinery will be in the shadows no longer. Wait, don't go yet. If you're new here, please subscribe and remember to ring the bell. I would really appreciate that. Give us a thumbs up or better yet, leave us a comment. I always read them. And be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. It's always packed with tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker.